The real story behind Ragnar Lothbrok, Viking hero or British villain. As powerful as the Brits and French were during the medieval times, there is one man who brought destruction and terror into these kingdoms, Ragnar Lothbrok, the fearless king of the Vikings who shook the whole of England and France and masterminded the heathen army. Hi, welcome to Thistory. In today's video, we are exploring the real story of the life of Ragnar Lothbrok, the famous hero of the Vikings whose reign ransacked several nations together. We will also explore if he was considered the hero of the Vikings or the villain of England. In the earlier years and when his fighting prowess became evident, Ragnar was believed by many to be the scourge of the earliest England medievals and those in France. He ravaged the Anglophone kingdoms from Northumbria and Wessex at different times. He also ravaged the Isles along the kingdoms of West Francia and rounded up his siege on Paris in 845 AD. The Family of Ragnar Lothbrok Though Ragnar was a fierce warrior and a great leader for the Vikings, he married thrice. The first was to shield maiden Lagertha, the second marriage was with noblewoman Pora Borgiort, and the last but the most popular was Oslog. Each of these women is defined by their unique and exciting stories. For instance, Oslog is said to be the daughter of Sigurd, the dragon slayer, and the Valkyrie Brynhild, while Pora was highly recognized as the daughter of the Harald Harua of Jadaland, a little-known town he saved from the dragon invasion. While there have been several doubts and conspiracies about Ragnar's existence, his sons who are all historical figures are proof of his existence. These sons are Bjorn Ironside, Afton Ragnarsson, Ivar the Boneless, Sigurd Snake in the Eye, and finally Abba, who was the chieftain of the Norse that eventually led the great heathen army that would ravage England in their invasion. Abba eventually controlled and constituted the land as a medieval state from 865 to 878, beyond which the Dane law would later be created, a territory ruled and under the influence of the Danish in early medieval Britain. The sons of Ragnar fought England as revenge for the murder of their father at the hand of Northumbrian king Ayla, who according to medieval history captured Ragnar and cast him into a deep pit that was full of snakes. However, there are also doubts regarding this fact. It is simple to say that from history, Ragnar as a boastful fighter went into battle with just two ships to face the king of Northumbria. This aligned with his personality as learned from history, thus confirming the truth about his death of his capture by the king and his sentence to death in the snake's pit. History talks about Lothbrok's sons avenging their father's death by capturing King Aella and performing Blood Eagle, which is a brutal ritual of cutting one's back open and making the ribs into a wing shape, thus exposing the lungs. In the Chronicles of War, no one has ever survived this death ritual. Victims are known to die even before the ribs are opened. Ragnar's Rise to Power Unlike many warriors in his days who fought their way to the throne, Ragnar's rise to power was through a monarchy system. His father, King Sigurd Ring, was the king of the Vikings who led a successful kingdom until his death in 812 AD. Immediately, Ragnar became the king of the Vikings, with whom he led several campaigns ravishing the British Isles, France, and the Isles of Ireland. His campaign brought untold amounts of wealth to the Vikings in lands, silver, and other valuable resources while leaving the besieged lands nearly desolate. A true hero to the Vikings. The Exploits of Ragnar Lothbrok the memories about Ragnar Lothbrok are not a familiar one, perhaps found in the thin line between far-side history and prevalent myths. The Skalds of Iceland were the propagators of his story, 350 years after his death. It is interesting to know that many of the kings and Renaissance leaders, from Guthrum to Knut the Great, attribute their lineage to these old-time heroes, one of whom is Ragnar Lothbrok. Ragnar was said to have sailed for England with two ships one after the other and as a premise to prove that he was far better than his sons. However, his two ships were no match for the Northumbrian forces of King Ayla, who captured him and threw him into the Pit of Snakes. It was in this pit he gave the foretelling of the great army of the heathen of 865 AD. He fortified his foretelling with his famous quote, how the little piglets would grunt should they know that the old boar suffered. This he did refer to his sons and the grooming army. In 865 AD, his quote became a reality when Britain was subjected to the largest Viking invasion of all time, led by Ivar the Boneless, one of Ragnar's sons, whose remains lie in a grave in Repton. 
perhaps this would be the dawn of Dane law. How much of history finds its ground in the existence of this legendary king who had such a deep and permanent effect on the country we call England today? It is intriguing in itself that there is scarce evidence to prove the existence of Ragnar, but more critically, such pieces of evidence still exist. Two such pieces of evidence refer to a specific and unavoidable Viking raider in 840 AD, which appeared in the chronicles of the Anglo-Saxons, which are very much reliable sources. They speak of Ragnall and Regen Hiris, and this is documented in the same manner as Ivar the Boneless being referred to the same as Imar of Dublin. On the flip side, Ragnall and Regen Hiris are believed to be the same person, Ragnar Lothbrok. It was historically reported that this not-so-famous Viking leader and warlord ravaged the coastal lands of medieval France and England and was given land as spoils of war and an accompanying monastery by Charles the Bald. However, he betrayed the covenant and sailed through the Seine to ransack Paris. In Paris, he was paid over 7,000 livres, or pounds, of silver, which was a ridiculously high amount at the time. Some French chronicles have in their records that the death of Ragnar and his war men was simply an act of divine retribution. Perhaps this was from a Christian proselytism perspective, as the Saxo Grammaticus has a standpoint that Ragnar was not slain, but in the truest of records was terrorizing the shores of Ireland in 851 AD, and also founded a settlement near Dublin. In the years that ensued, Ragnar reportedly ravaged the entire Ireland and the northwest coast of England. This would mostly assume that the death of Ragnar in the hands of King Ayla of Northumbria was simply rooted in myth and not in true history. Many similar historical records reveal that he died sometime between 852 AD and 856 AD on the Irish Sea during one of his sieges. While there may be fabricated reports of his relationship with King Ayla, his relationship with his sons had proof and are not fabricated. Just like their Ragnar, his sons were also considered villains. Apart from England, they also invaded and conquered the kingdoms of Zealand, Jutland, Jotland, and other small islands. After their father died, they made themselves lords over the kingdoms they had conquered, enslaving the people there. Interestingly, while many authors and researchers put forward that the records of the Icelandic sagas that described the life of Ragnar as inaccurate, his sons lived in the right places which aided the confirmation of the deeds earlier mentioned. The final confirmation is that his sons claimed him to be their father. Of all the conspiracies and ideologies, there are pieces of evidence that show the deep impact which his sons left on Britain. To the Brits, Ragnar was nothing more than a villain whose war-included sons did most of the damage to their kingdom. In 865 AD, the Great Heathen Army arrived in Anglia, where they eliminated Edmund the Martyr in Thetford, and they moved forward to the north and ravaged the city of York. The city of York was where King Ayla was killed. The years after the continual raid would mark the advent of a nearly 200-year period of the occupation of the Norse in northern and eastern England. A tale of greed and the intoxication of power. Perhaps the reality holds that the dreaded Ragnar Lothbrok legend was interestingly built on the reputation of Ragnar Lodbrok, the same person who carried out a successful raiding campaign in Britain, Ireland, and France in the 9th century. His raiding was premised on his selfish goal of amassing extravagant quantities of treasure. In the centuries after his raids were finally recorded in Iceland during the 13th century, the Viking chronicles on Ragnar Lothbrok had almost and entirely obscured the achievements and success of other Viking heroes at the time. His moves, campaigns, battles, and several other deeds were all marked by the need to prove the power and amass wealth for greedy gains. This is overarching such that the deeds of Ragnar converted into a blend of Norse tales and adventurous fairy tales, and thus the real Ragnar soon lost his place in medieval history, and his story became a new intake in the realm of myths. In truth, he and his army enriched the Vikings but caused devastation in the nations he besieged. He was a lauded hero of the Vikings and a villain to the Brits, the French, and the Ireland folks. They all encountered him but experienced him differently. To the Vikings, a hero. To others, a villain.